We, we read a few minutes ago from Matthew's Gospel and chapter 4. And we, we are looking now at verses 12 to, to 17 in, in that chapter. Matthew 4, verses 12 to 17. In the middle of that passage we read that the people living in darkness have seen a great light. Uh, and nobody likes to be in the dark. Um, most of us, perhaps all of us, have some idea of what it is to be in, in the dark, to be in physical darkness. We, we know what it is to be somewhere unfamiliar at night time, somewhere unfamiliar when, when it is dark. To be found in the darkness and to be unsure then of our, our surroundings. But the Bible speaks to us over and over again about another kind of darkness. Spiritual darkness, moral darkness. <coughs> the Bible speaks about being in the dark with regards to God, with regards to right and wrong, being in the dark with regards to, to heaven and the, the way to heaven. And yet, one of the great themes of the Bible is that God sends light into the darkness. We. We have the beginning of that theme at the very beginning of the Bible in the, the creation account. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And that theme then continues all the way through the Bible. Uh, and that theme reaches its highest point with the coming of Jesus Christ into the world. In John chapter 3 and verse 19, it says of Jesus Christ coming into the world that light, light has come into the world. And here in these verses in Matthew chapter 4, Matthew writes about that. He, he writes here about the early part of, of Jesus' public ministry. It was around the time that John the Baptist, Jesus' relative who, who prepared the way for him, ha had been put into prison. And when Jesus heard that John had been put into prison, he left Nazareth where he had grown up and he went to live in Capernaum. And this morning we're, we're thinking about what happened when Jesus Christ went to Capernaum. And we're going to begin by thinking about Capernaum, by thinking about the kind of place that Capernaum was. Capernaum was in the, the far north of Israel, on the, the northern shore of, of Lake Galilee. When the Israelites entered the promised land many years earlier and the land was divided up amongst the, the 12 tribes of Israel, Capernaum was in the area given to the tribe of Naphtali. And alongside that was the area given to the tribe of Zebulun. And so we read here in, in verse 13 that, that Jesus went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake, in the area of, of Zebulun and Naphtali. What kind of place was Capernaum? This place in the, the north of Israel where, where Jesus went to, to live for a time. Let me try to say a few things about Capernaum. First of all, it seems that it was a, a busy place, uh, an active place, a, a, a bustling sort of place. 
It was on the, the edge of, of Lake Galilee. And there appears to have been a thriving fishing industry in, in Capernaum. And some of Jesus' first disciples were, were fishermen from Capernaum. We read in, in verse 18 of, of Jesus walking beside the, the Sea of Galilee there. And, and he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I'll make you fishers of men. At once they lift their nets and followed him. And then going off from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. And they were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. And Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And it seems that Capernaum was busy and important enough for, for the Romans to have a, a tax collector based in Capernaum and working in Capernaum. In chapter 9 and, and verse 9, we, we read of Matthew, the, the tax collector in Capernaum, sitting at its tax collector's booth. And he too was called to be one of Jesus' disciples. There was a Roman centurion based in Capernaum. Um, chapter 8 and verse 5 says that when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help, and that the presence of a Roman centurion in Ca Capernaum would, would suggest that there could well have been a, a detachment of Roman soldiers in, in Capernaum. So there were fishermen there, tax collectors there, soldiers there. It was a busy, bustling, active place. Capernaum was also a mixed place. A mixed place. People of different kinds, uh, a place of different kinds of people. It, it, it's referred to in verse 15 as being in the region of Galilee of the Gentiles. Uh, and although it was in Israel, it was a place where many Gentiles, many non-Israelites uh, lived. And th this has been the case for a long, long time. Many, many years earlier when, th when the Israelites had first entered the, the Promised Land. And the, the tribes of Naphtali and, and Zebulun had been given this, this region at the, at the north of the land. They were told to, to drive out the, the Canaanites who, who lived there, but the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali failed to do that. And so in Judges chapter 1 and, and verse 30, much earlier in the, the history of Israel, we're, we're told neither did Zebulun drive out the Canaanites living in Kitron or Nahalol, who remained among them. And then in verse 33 of Judges chapter 1, neither did Naphtali drive out those living in Beth Shemesh or Beth Anath. But the Naphtalites too lived among the Canaanite inhabitants of the land. And so from the beginning of the, the settlement of the, the Israelites in the, the promised land, this, this region to the north was a, a mixed region of Israelites and Canaanites. And then much later in Old Testament history when the, the mighty Assyrian army invaded the, the, the north, the areas of Naphtali and Zebulun felt the, the full brunt of this. People from that region were taken captive to Assyria and Assyrians settled in, in that region. In 2 Kings chapter 15 and verse 29, when Assyria attacked Israel, we're told in the time of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglath Pilesar, king of Assyria, came and took Ijon, Abel, Beth Makar, Janua, Kadesh, and Hezor. He took Gilead and Galilee, including all the land of Naphtali, and deported the people to Assyria. So, Capernaum in this region of Galilee, it was a mixed place. People of different nationalities, people of different backgrounds, all mixed together. 
And then that leads to a, a third thing which we can say about Capernaum. And it's, it's, it's the main thing, really, that we're, we're told in this passage, Capernaum was a dark place. It was a dark place. Perhaps due, in part, to the fact that it was a mixed place, made up of people of different backgrounds. Over the years, pagan people with different gods, strange gods, had lived in Capernaum and the, the region of, of Galilee. There has been idols uh, and idolatry in, in this region. And where there is idolatry, where there are false gods, where there is confusion about who God is, that there is always also immorality because there is confusion about what God requires of us. There was darkness then in Capernaum. Spiritual darkness, confusion about God, ignorance of God. There was moral darkness, there was immoral behavior in, in Capernaum. And this was the settled condition of Capernaum and the people. We, we, we read here of the people living or, or the people sitting in darkness. It wasn't just that this was a brief passing period of, of darkness, but the people were, were sat in darkness. The, the, the darkness had, had taken root in, in Capernaum and, and, and in the surrounding region. And then something is added about that darkness. You read in verse 16 that the people of Capernaum were living in darkness and then at the end of the verse that they were living in the land of the shadow of death. Capernaum, like every other place in this fallen world, was a place that was affected by, by death. It was a place where the shadow of death loomed large. It was a place where the people lived in constant fear and concern about uh, uh, aggression from, from, from powerful forces in the north, just over the border, who knew when invading armies would, would come again, who knew when, when death would, would come again to, to the region. So here was this place, Capernaum in the north of Israel. A busy, active, bustling place. A mixed place of people of, of different backgrounds. But a dark place. Spiritually and morally dark. And a place under the, the shadow of death. In other words, Capernaum, 2,000 years ago, was a place just like so many places in the world today. There, there are some places we go to today, aren't there? Some, some towns and villages that, that seem sleepy. But, but most towns and villages we, we visit are, are active, busy, bustling places as people go about their work and go about their duties. People are often so busy going about their work and their duties that they never stop to think about God and to think about the needs of their souls. And Capernaum was a, a mixed place, like, like so many places in, in the world, like, like so many places in our country today. And especially in recent years with the rise of, of the, the modern media, all kinds of mixed ideas are found in the villages and towns and cities of our land. Mixed ideas about God. Mixed ideas about right and wrong. Mixed ideas about heaven and, and what the way to heaven may be. So much confusion. And as a result of that confusion, there is so much idolatry and, and immorality in the world. And of course, 
the shadow of death that lay over Capernaum lies over all our villages and towns and cities. That the shadow of death it is never far from any one of us. It's a shadow that, that touches all of our lives. As people we know and love die and are, are taken from us, it's a shadow that, that grows in all of our lives as we all draw nearer to the, the day of our, our own death. This, this, was, this was Capernaum. And we're told in verse 13 that leaving Nazareth, Jesus went and lived in Capernaum. This was the place that Jesus went to. It was the place where Jesus spent much of his, his ministry, the, the, the early part of his, his public ministry. So having thought about the kind of place that Capernaum was, let, let's think secondly about what happened in that place. Ma Matthew quotes here from the prophecy of Isaiah. He, he, he quotes from Isaiah chapter 9. And he says that, that when Jesus went to Capernaum, when he went to, to the region of Galilee, the, the area of Zeb Zebulun and Naphtali, it was, verse 14, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah, land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, the way to the sea along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. And those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. That's Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 9 is, is one of the great... Old Testament prophecies about the, the coming of the Savior a few lines later in Isaiah chapter 9. We read, to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on forever. Some 700 years earlier, Isaiah said that a, a, a savior would come, a wonderful counselor, mighty God, and so on. And Isaiah said that when that savior came, when Jesus Christ came, the people living in Zebulun and, and Naphtali, the, the people in the region of Galilee, the, the people in Capernaum, those people living in darkness, they would see a great light. And that's what happened. And let's, let's think about that a, a little. Let, let's think about how the, 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 the people of Capernaum saw this, this great light. He, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the, the, the light of the world. He went to that place. And in that place he taught. It was in that region that Jesus taught the Sermon on the Mount that we have in chapters 5 to 7. It was in the region of Capernaum and Galilee, that Jesus saw the crowds and went up on a mountainside and sat down. And his disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And in the region of Galilee and in Capernaum, Jesus taught about God and who God is and what God requires of us and what is right and what is wrong. And about heaven and hell and the, the way to heaven. He taught about himself and his, his death and his resurrection. And all that he would do to save sinful people from their sins. It was in this place that he taught. It was in this place that he performed many of his miracles. Read the, the early chapters of the Gospels. Read of Jesus Christ in Capernaum in the, the region of Galilee. Performing the, the most wonderful miracles. 
It, it was in this place that Jesus declared he had the authority to forgive sins. One day he was teaching at a house in Capernaum and the house was packed full with people listening to him. And four men brought their paralyzed friend to Jesus and that they couldn't get to him because there were so many people crowded into the house and they, they went up the staircase onto the to the roof of the house began began opening up a hole in the, the roof of the house and eventually let the, their friend down before Jesus. And Jesus there said to that man, before the people of Capernaum, son, your, your sins are forgiven. It, it was in that place, Capernaum, as we've already seen, that Jesus called his, his first disciples. Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, John, Matthew, they were, they were working in Capernaum and, and Jesus called them to, to follow him. The people of Capernaum saw Jesus Christ. The people of Capernaum heard Jesus Christ. The Son of God, the, the light of the world. For, for many years, Capernaum had been a place of, of darkness. But now, the people living in darkness saw a, a great light. A great light had, had come amongst them. And the people of Capernaum then, they, they, they were given hope. They, they lived in the land of the shadow of death. That shadow of death was over them. And one came amongst them who by his own death and resurrection would overcome death. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, died on a cross and was buried. But at his death, he took the sting of death, which is sin. And so gives forgiveness of sin and hope in the face of death to all who, who believe in him. He rose from the dead and his death and his resurrection guarantees a, a wonderful resurrection to all who are united to him. Into a world that is under the shadow of death has come Jesus Christ. Who gives light and hope. And notice the way it's, it's put here. This light has dawned upon them. Verse 16, the people... Living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. The light dawned again this morning, didn't it? A few hours ago it was dark. And then dawn came and it was light. Now what, what, what did you and I contribute to that? We, we contributed nothing, did we? We, 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 can't, we can't make it light. We, we, we can't make the sunrise. We, we can't make the light dawn. It's, it's outside of our control. And so it is with spiritual darkness and spiritual light. <laughs> the, 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 the people of Capernaum didn't cause the light to dawn. But God caused the light to dawn by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to them. And, and people today cannot produce light, cannot produce spiritual light in their own hearts or in the hearts of others. You, you can't do that. I, I can't do that. None of us can do that. But God can do that. And God does that. And God... In his grace causes the light to dawn in people's hearts and lives. So that with the eyes of their hearts they see Jesus Christ. They, they, they see the light. They, they, they come to him. They believe in him. A 
And notice that when Jesus went to Capernaum, the people, those people in darkness, they were called to turn to the light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light that has dawned, the, the light that shines in the darkness. Uh, and what was the message he preached when he went to Capernaum? What, what's the message about Jesus Christ that is preached in a, a world of, of darkness today? What, what's the message that comes from Jesus Christ to, to you and to me in, in all of our darkness this morning? Well, it's summed up here in, in verse 17. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The, the message that Jesus Christ, that the light of the world, preached in Capernaum, is summed up in this word, Repent. To repent is to turn. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, calls you to turn. To turn from the darkness. And to turn to him. To turn to the light. He calls you to turn from your sin and, and turn to him. To turn from your, your sinful acts, your sinful thoughts, your <coughs> sinful desires. To, to confess these things to him, to, to confess to him the, the darkness of your heart. And to turn to him, to believe in him. To ask for his forgiveness uh, and his salvation. The, the light came, the light shone in the darkness of Capernaum and said, turn, repent, turn to me. But the people of Capernaum were like so many people in the world today. There were some in Capernaum but repented of their sins and turned to Jesus Christ, turned to the light. And we would think that perhaps all of them would want to do this. But many did not. So we've already quoted this morning, John chapter 3 and verse 19. Where John says, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world. But then John says, but men loved darkness instead of light. Because their deeds were evil. Many people love the darkness. Sounds a strange thing, doesn't it, when we, we say it like that, but, but it's, it's true, isn't it? Many people love their sin. Many people are quite happy and at ease in their, their life of sin without the Lord Jesus Christ. And are happy to remain in the darkness. And that was true of many of the people of Capernaum. A little later in, in Matthew's Gospel, towards the end of his ministry in, in Capernaum, speaking about his ministry in Capernaum, he, he said in Matthew 11 and verse 23, You, Capernaum, Will you be lifted up to the skies? No. You will go down to the depths. If the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have repented to this day. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. 
But the people of Capernaum, so many of the people of Capernaum, they, they saw the, the, the light that is Jesus Christ. They, they saw the miracles he performed. They, they, they heard his gracious words, his, his wonderful teaching, and yet they, they did not repent. They, they remained in the darkness. And Jesus said that Capernaum would be brought down and judged. Because it failed to see who Jesus Christ was and to turn to him and believe in him. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On three occasions later in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8 and verse 12, chapter 22 and verse 13, Chapter 25 and verse 30. Jesus Christ himself speaks about hell. The place where those who remain in their sin are, are punished forever. As a place of darkness. Outer darkness. And yet he is the light. Light of the world. And he calls you to repent and turn to him that you may be saved from darkness now and from outer darkness then. That you may come into the light now and spend eternity with him in the, in the light of heaven. This passage describes the wonder of the gospel. The wonder of God's grace. The wonder of the person of Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And that light, Jesus Christ, says to us all this morning, Repent. Come out of the darkness and come into his marvelous light.